Hey guys, welcome to a new Shields cooking video. It's been a while since my last uploaded video and I'm terribly sorry about that. My son was born, which was a very happy occasion. Then I started filming again and then I got hit by a car. Um, I'm doing well, my leg still hurts a lot. So I'm doing off and on days while filming and it took a while for me to recover before I could hit the studio again, but I'm super happy to be back. And today we're going to make a beautiful glazed maitake mushroom dish. It's a pan roasted maitake mushroom with an onion glaze, a potato foam, deep fried crispy capers, and on the side, a delicious mushroom brioche. So let's begin. First, we're going to make the cured mushroom egg yolks. Mix 260 grams of coriander salt with 200 grams of cane sugar and 20 grams of mushroom powder. Mix this. Now cover the bottom of a tray with a thin layer of the mixture and use the back of a spoon to make 10 dimples. Then separate enough eggs to fill all 10 dimples with the yolks. I use medium sized eggs. Now cover the yolks completely with the remaining salt and sugar cure and let it cure in your fridge for 3 days. This will help the yolks firm up, it gives them a wonderful flavor and it preserves the yolks as well. After that rinse any remaining cure off and place the yolks on an oven rack. Let them dry at 60 degrees Celsius for at least 5 hours till dry. Then keep them in your freezer for later. Now for the potato and garlic foam. Cut the top off from two bulbs of garlic and place them on some aluminium foil. Now drizzle some olive oil on top and season with some salt. Then wrap the garlic as tight as possible and bake them in an oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. Meanwhile cut two onions in half and clean them. Now chop them. In total you'll need 100 grams of chopped onion. Then add a drizzle of oil in a frying pan and glaze the chopped onions on a medium low heat with 3 grams of salt. Beware that the onions don't color. Now take some waxy potatoes and peel them. You'll need 200 grams of clean potatoes. Then cut them in even sized pieces and add them to the pan with 350 grams of vegetable broth and 250 grams of cream. After that take the baked garlic and remove the foil. Let it cool down for 5 minutes before weighing 40 grams of the toasted cloves. Add it to the pan and let it slowly reduce till the total weight is 550 grams. Once it has reduced enough, transfer it into a measuring cup or a blender and blend it till smooth. Really make sure that there are no more lumps, otherwise the siphon will be clogged. Now pour it into a siphon and charge it with two charges. Be sure to shake it well after each charge. Then keep it in your fridge for later. Now for the onion and Madeira glaze. Cut 5 sweet onions in half and clean them. Now chop them. Then add a drizzle of oil in a frying pan and caramelize the onions on a medium heat with 3 grams of salt. Stir it every now and then to prevent it from burning. Once the onions have a nice golden brown color, deglaze the pan with a liter of Madeira wine and also add 4 sprigs of thyme, a liter of vegetable broth and 6 cloves of garlic. Let this simmer on a low heat for at least 6 hours. After that, pass the broth through a fine sieve and use a small ladle to press out any liquid so you don't waste anything. Now when necessary, reduce the broth till you're happy with the flavor. Then mix half a tablespoon of potato starch with around 30 grams of water and while mixing, add it to the boiling broth to thicken it. Normally I always use santam gum to thicken my broths, but with a hot broth you can also use potato starch. I wouldn't recommend cornstarch. This will make a clear broth cloudy. Then keep it in your fridge for later. Now for the smoked oil. Take a small piece of coal and heat it up with a blowtorch. You could also use a piece of hot coal after barbecuing, but here I just heat it up especially for this recipe. Now pour 250 grams of a neutral oil in a metal pot. I use sunflower oil. Then take the glowing coal and quickly submerge it in the oil. Directly cover it with a lid and let the oil marinate for 2 hours. I do this outside. After that remove the lid and pass the oil through a fine sieve that's lined with a kitchen paper to clarify it. The oil is great to use on its own or to use as a base for a mayonnaise. Now for the deep fried capers. Start by draining a jar of capers and let them dry for 5 minutes on a tray that's lined with a kitchen paper. Then add a small handful in a sieve and deep fry them at 210 degrees celsius to make them puff up. Now continue deep frying them until no more bubbles form. This is a sign that they are crispy. Then spread them on the kitchen paper and let them dry for one more hour at 60 degrees celsius to really ensure all the moisture has evaporated, otherwise they might become soggy. After, keep them dry and covered for later. Now for the mushroom brioche. 
Mix 20 grams of milk with 4 grams of dry yeast and while mixing heat it up till it's 30 degrees Celsius. Then pour 250 grams of flour in your worktop and use the bowl to make a well in the middle. Fill it with 3 eggs, 30 grams of sugar, 10 grams of mushroom powder and the yeast mixture. Now use a fork to bring this together till it's an even mixture and then add 3 grams of salt. Then knead it for 10 minutes. After that add 150 grams of butter and knead it for another 10 minutes. Of course you can also do this in the machine, but I wanted to show you that it's also possible by hand. In a machine you can halve the kneading time. Now transfer the dough in a bowl and cover it with some wrap or a damp cloth. Let it proof for 2 hours till it's doubled in size. Meanwhile take a mixture of beautiful edible flowers and spread the petals on a metal tray. I use different colors of marigold and cornflowers. Let this completely dry at 60 degrees Celsius. After the dough has doubled in size, transfer it on your worktop and portion it into pieces that weigh 50 grams. I find that this is a good size for one person. Then make a little bowl with your hand and use it to ball up the portioned dough. I made two bigger breads from four bowls each and four single ones. The rings from the single ones I lined with some parchment paper. Now cover them once more and let the dough proof for 45 minutes till it has doubled in size. Then break one egg in a bowl and add 50 grams of milk. Mix this till smooth. Now add a thin layer of the egg mixture on the proof brioche. I do this with a brush or a plant sprayer. Then sprinkle some flaky salt on top and bake them at 190 degrees Celsius for around 15 to 18 minutes till golden brown. Do the same with the single brioche breads. Once they're golden, take them out of the oven and directly glaze them with some melted butter. Then take the dried flower petals and sprinkle it generously on top. The melted butter will make the bread shine and it will act as a glue. Do the same with the single brioche breads. After that, remove the breads from the rings and the baking tins and let them cool down completely. It's best to serve them as soon as possible. Now we can start to finish the dish. Take the maitake mushrooms and portion them to the desired size. They will slink quite a bit, so don't portion them too small. Now add a drizzle of oil in a frying pan and pan fry the maitake till golden brown with some salt for seasoning. Once golden, add a knot of butter and then turn them around. Again, pan fry till golden brown. Then place them on a metal tray and glaze them with a generous amount of the onion glaze. The pan frying you can also do as a prep beforehand. Now heat this up at 150 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. Then add a big dot of the hot potato foam on a hot plate and grate some cured egg yolk on top. Use a brush to clean the sides. Now place the glazed maitake in the center and drip some smoked oil on top. Then decorate it with some crispy deep fried capers and white corn flour petals. And now the dish is ready to be served. I serve it with the burrash bread on the side. Okay guys, that's it for today. I am super happy with the result. The dish looks amazing, especially the glaze on the maitake mushroom and uh, the beautiful vibrant colors on the brioche looks spectacular um, it took a while to get here with everything that was going on i mean i started out with curing the egg yolks and then uh then we had to dry them while they were drying i got hit by the car and then i couldn't stand for at least a week so yeah it, it took a while but it's definitely worth it and thank you all so much for your patience um i especially love the potato foam with the with the roasted garlic it's such a good combination with the glaze on the maitake and then yeah the brioche i mean it looks incredible obviously you don't need to do the flowers but if you have oh, so much flowers in the garden during the summer you can just dry them and keep them in a little seal bag for during the, the winter season or autumn or spring season and then just sprinkle them on top and it really brings some vibrant colors during the dark days um let's say it like that but i think it's just a really nice addition to the whole dish to really make it pop um but if you don't do it it's not going to make a massive difference because the brioche is still going to be so good and um yeah i just think it looks super cool so let's just dig in because i can't wait to taste all those lovely components coming together yeah that's so good it has so much flavor especially like i said that glaze on the mataka mushroom 
maitake already has so much flavor. It's one of my favorite mushrooms. But that with the glaze, the beautiful fried capers from some texture. It's amazing. And then the soft, fluffy brioche bread, fresh from the oven. And use it wisely. And what I mean by that is just use it to pick up all the sauce, everything from the dish and just enjoy it. Um, so guys, that's it for today. Please let me know in the comments on what you want to see next. Like and share this video. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to support my channel, but also if you don't want to miss any other videos. And as always, bon appétit. Good. Good.